that the Epon itself is that I'm connecting, uh, it looks like my bicep, my forearm, making a V, connecting to his arm, right around under his armpit, that allows me to get some elevation and get my hips underneath, so I have that feeling. And there's a lower version of it, there's drop Epons, you got a trip to an Epon, but the grip itself is what's important. So, many different ways to set up the grip, but we're gonna kind of start off with a very basic training grip. I'm gonna have a sleeve grip on his outside, um, my same side as, my, as, as me, he has an uh, inside collar, I have sleeve grip, I have a collar, and then he, he has a sleeve grip. I step my right foot to his right foot. As I do that, my left arm comes underneath, and I'm just gonna circle and pivot. You guys are gonna do a lift. What I want you to do is come under a step, cut, your hips are spin underneath. I feel like your hips, like he's now loaded on you, and you're just gonna stand up, okay? And it's all glute and hip just to get the load. Uh, but you feel like their weight is up and over you, okay? Oh, think about Osoto Gary, we left the hand here after we had the frame arms, we kind of opened up. Now we have this control, wave off, Osoto Gary, chin, etc. Now this hand is traveling underneath. Now I want you guys to think about it, you're making a frame. The kind of the feeling, as long as you're making a frame on that side a little bit. What's important is I'm hiding my head there, but I'm also starting to add um, footwork and movement to get him off balance. A great application here is getting a knee knock. I can add my nice knee knock again here, which, all, which does two, a dual purpose. Sets my hips, it gets his hip out of the way, it loads me, so now I can turn, and now, there's my old Soto Gary. I'm, I'm sorry, Ipa Seo Nagi. All right, so, get a big guy. So, as he throws, we'll start right, we'll start right off just with the hook. So he's gonna throw that punch, we're gonna come in, boom. Let the hand travel underneath, hide our head. Now we're looking at that knee, we're coming through that knee to blast it open. I turn my hips, change my level, load them up. And he so the actual important part is connecting to the wrist and getting my elbow over so I have some space to work with. So I go for my first grip, how we're rolling. I want once I fall on the ground, I don't care necessarily where I grab first, but I want my elbow to come over. And so almost something called walkie atomic, right? But my objective is to slide to the wrist. And this is where that movement comes in, where I'm trying to almost hide and keep it away from him. And then I unwind. So I'm gonna turn real quick. This elbow unwinding is important. When I find my footwork catches like you guys were just drilling, it's gonna come over the shoulder and I violently turn, not violently, I aggressively turn my other shoulder in, like I'm throwing a right, like a right, bam, right? It's the same concept. His elbow rolls over, I keep this connected to my center line. I don't want it out here, I want it part of my body, just like when I'm finishing any rotational submission. And then I drop my chest hard, right down to the ground, I keep it there, stick. He's gonna want to run, that's when the elbow comes over, and then add the, same add your thing. Fingers. That isn't spinning, I'm almost gonna throw an Uchimana kick in there, I'm kick him going back and get him off balance. And violently twist and roll him right back down. Come on, I'm rolling. Get that leg out of the way and just stop. So let's talk about Aiki Jitsu's uh, concept of, the, of small joint manipulation. I'm using one small joint to control the, the, the wrist, elbow, shoulder, hip. So I apply a little rotation and we get a, a pretty big reaction within the body, all right? And that's, that's what we're doing. This is not a skill you learn tonight. This is not a skill that you pick up uh, or after next week. You can learn and play with it and there's definitely tons of uh, grappling applications that are for sport and MMA. You've seen it a bunch of times and it's small doses, but because it takes a little while, a while to pick up. So we'll start basic. We'll show you some skills off it too, but let's have a little fun. So to start off just a Cody Yash uh, itself and then we'll build upon it. It's basically a wrist twist and how, it's, how I like to think about it is if I, I need to make a box with his hand, okay? From his elbow, I'm sorry, his shoulder, his elbow, wrist, the hand is an imaginary point over here, and I'm trying to keep that box together. And I, to reinforce that box, I think about him adding rotation into his hand that way. So I'm not trying to push forward in the kid to close it off. I'm not trying to pull it away, okay? I'm not trying to necessarily rotate or steer like this either, though that's what's happening. What's really happening is that I should think my finger right on that middle knuckle is pointing like that way, which adds rotation. And from it, if I maintain the box 
It's almost like I can just control him and, and, and then finish at the end, all right? What if, if from a gun threatened? And again, anytime you're playing with a gun, that the gun has to be in my range. Be standing far away with me pointing at a gun. Obviously, it's bullshit, okay? So, a great application is when I do code of gash, is when, when I'm doing weapons defense, I now can stay on that, drop him, keep that bun, gun basically glued in his head, take it away, okay? So, that's one cool application of like Aiki Jitsu on a, uh, on, a, on, a, on a weapons defense side. But we can do this a lot, and uh, some of you guys know Jules, I can just do it during the match too. And have the same type of result. I can start learning to attack the wrist and pull it away from him, then come back in and create a box. So, so actual, it can use a lot. The important part is connecting to the wrist and getting my elbow over so I have some space to work with. So I go for my first good, how we're rolling. I want to, once I fall on the ground, I don't care necessarily where I grab first, but I want my elbow to come over. And so almost something called walking like Walaki Yatami, right? But my objective is to slide to the wrist. And this is where that movement comes in, where I'm trying to almost hide and keep it away from him. And then I unwind. So I'm gonna turn real quick. This elbow unwinding is important. When I find my footwork catches like you guys were just drilling, it's gonna come over the shoulder and I violently turn, not violent, but I aggressively turn my other shoulder in, like I'm throwing a right, like a right, bam, right? It's the same concept. This elbow rolls over, I keep this connected to my center line. I don't want it out here, I want it part of my body, just like I'm finishing any rotational submission. And then I drop my chest hard, right down to the ground, I keep it there, stick. He's gonna want to run, that's when the elbow comes over, and then add, the, add your finish. Traditional okay. fireman's carry. Or the way we do it traditional, um, I like to use a sliding instead of both knees in. I'll show you in a second. When I'm setting up my fireman's carry, I like to have a loose overhook grip so that my, his hand is almost right in my armpit and my head is in his chin. All right, this is my, my kind of staging. So when I'm gonna hit the fireman's carry, I want the same side that I had the overhook control his leg forward, all right? Because I'm gonna use my, my other hand to come in for a C grip, all right? So now I'm gonna drive my right knee to the ground, pull over, and latch on this leg. It's very important to stay connected to this. Now, traditional fireman's, to so the judo, your knees would come in and you come over. I've always had a hard time. I don't like slamming my knees onto the mat. On uh, Kobe Kai Jitsu, we start, we do the sliding one. So this leg now is gonna slide. Also, I'm trying to get my left thigh on top of his foot. And I sit, and I don't. I have basic fireman's set up. So one more time, got my grip. And then there, slide through. Uh -huh. And I actually will pull so this, catch the leg, to stay on top. And if you are playing footlock rules or prison rules, I can easily latch on uh, for straight ankle lock, heel hooker. Oh, and I was kind of asking him how he starts integrating, you know, because we were in another video we were talking about how sometimes the, uh, the submissions and finishes in Samo look accidental, but they're actually purposeful and planned, and how a lot of his throws and takedowns, they they flow right into it, especially in some of leg locks and arm submissions, et cetera, because they don't really do much chokes, but I know you do. Yeah. Uh, but so I kind of wanted to pick his brain and see what he's got, uh, kind of some nice transitions. And he was just sh showing, uh, showing a nice uh, fireman's carry to uh, a straight ankle lock. I'm sure to heel hook there too, whatever you, yeah, yeah, you, 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 whatever you want. So you have, you have get the on the leg, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll kind of let, let it from there and just go for it. Show, right, show us what you got. Got you, got you, got you. Uh, a couple things about fireman's carry uh, period by itself. So uh, if I grab, uh, if I have this arm captured for conventional fireman's carry, I want to get that leg, right? So as far as setup, which is kind of important. Uh, I can do it, you know, speed-wise, but as far as moving pattern, if I go this, if I'm chasing the leg I want, exa that, that's exactly what's going to transpire. It's going to be never-ending. So very much like in life, sometimes you have to step back and whatever you want will come to you, you know? So now I want to be stepping back. Right, so once I'm here, uh, whichever lapel hand I have, I'll have the same leg forward, and I'm going to be keeping it forward. So in other words, I don't alternate my pattern and I don't pull uh, Sean towards me. I want to step in a circle of fashion, like this. You see, so his leg came up to me. And now all I gotta do just, yeah, uh, time it. That's my cue. As I press, my trailing leg pushes in and I'm getting in with a hard pull, guys, right? Super important, if I don't pull hard, it's gonna be A, upright, and B, uh, he can counter me. So I wanna offset him by, like this. So he's on my shoulders like a lamb on shepherd's uh, neck, so to speak. And it's especially more so transparent, the need of that pull if you do Standing fireman scary. If I just get here without pulling, I'm gonna lift him all lopsided. However, if I get hard pull, 
I distribute his weight properly uh, for ease of operation. Okay, so pull is important. So setup, sudden disappearance, and on pull will create setup for fireman's carry. And conventional finish is just rolling him, right? So we're here, we're here, roll, roll, and follow some kind of top pin, top attack. However, you can keep that leg and go full leg lock. So what I do in this case, I'm here as I'm dropping, keeping that leg and spinning right towards me. All right, and as opposed to heel hook, which he can escape, once I put his leg in this kind of predicament, vice grip, there's no way to pull out. He can hand fight or whatever, and then just get on leg and uh, apply appropriate finish. It's not the finish we're talking about, it's about getting on the leg. One, two, and three. There you go, so out of curiosity, um, I don't know if I'll be able to pull this off my groin right now. Our fires, we tell a lot sometimes, is we'll slide and leave that. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing. Uh, what do you think about that? Any? Uh, do you like one particular style better? Than no, the other, or? matter of preference. Matter of preference. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I teach people that have difficulty squatting or dropping on their knees. It's better to sit out to spare the knees. Yeah, I, so I, that's that, always been. That's a quick, why I do it. Yes, that's always been one of my favorite ones in that yeah. side. Uh, yeah, but if we're talking about sport predicament, being on the mat. I can I can personally afford dropping on my two knees, but if it's you know if it's so setup, sudden disappearance, and arm pull will create setup for fireman's carry, and conventional finish is just rolling in, right? So we're here, we're here, roll, roll, and follow some kind of top pin, top attack. However, you can keep that leg and go full leg lock. So what I do in this case, I'm here as I'm dropping, keeping that leg and spinning right towards me. All right? And as opposed to heel hook, which he can escape, once I put his leg in this kind of predicament, vice grip, there's no way to pull out. He can hand fight or whatever, and then just get on leg and uh, apply appropriate finish. The concept we're going to use um, is, is sometimes referred to boxing as a cross arm guard, uh, tri tap, and call it frame four. Uh, but it's, you use a kind of a universal little pattern to defend against the punches, but also set up and defend against the leg kick. So Kansas is going to throw a jab cross. So some of our basic options uh, for defending a jab cross would be like a parry parry. Bah, bah, okay. I can just cover up a ride. Boom, boom. Okay. Uh, that, when that, we started covering up, that's when we kind of thought that, that the tri tac framing concept. And one of those is the cross arm guard. I'm just folding, tucking my chain, folding my hands, basically. And it'd be very similar to the Philly shell. It's just kind of like more of an arm Philly shell. The Philly shell would be here. So he's on the jab, cross, boom, boom. All right, I'm just now covering up. When he throws the leg kick, or oh, sorry, uh, 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 we're gonna go to the body kick. When he throws the body kick, it's almost gonna be the same kind of configuration. So when he throws the body kick, I just lift this right to the body kick. Now, we'll do it again. We'll be entering in the body kick, kind of and having that same almost position. We'll be catching the kick, cutting it off but also using that frame so in the beginning all I want us to do right now is uh, he's just going to throw a jab cross we're going to go boom boom he's going to throw that leg kick we're going to step in and take it and then make sure our hands here and come right to his head all right that's our first little warm-up so he throws jab cross boom boom, boom. step in. we're just going to isolate the jab cross right now it's like oh shit bam bam now he comes to that leg kick we're riding it in all right I don't want to, so kick again. I don't want to take the kick ugh, open and like falling away from it. I want to, give me the leg first. If I can cut the leg to kick off. Will, will, will come back? I'm coming. Oh no, go there. Wait, <laughs> hold on, stay. If I can cut the kick off before it reaches its power. Um, yes, I eat a shot a little bit, but it gives me a great, it's like I'm not having a great bite in a single leg. You know, it's very easy to finish when you have the leg like this. So, you know, we're talking about combat. You take a little, but you get a lot, all right? So, warm up. He throws jab cross, bah, bah, kick, step in. I'm using that, make sure my hand is up. Then I'm gonna frame here if you wanna play with some knees or, oh shit, sorry. Here, here. But you have, you have a nice, good control. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, there's down. many different tools that you can use to defend yourself. And, and this, for me, makes a lot of sense. It feels very natural. Uh, if you're having a problem with that, then revert very simply back to covering your head, boom, boom. I almost tuck my chin, make my feet cover as much of my jawline as possible. I put my hands right in the crown of my head so I have it connected. I'm trying to create a forward helmet, all right? If he throws his jab cross hook, bam, bam, I can easily bring my other hand up to cover that, 
that line, if that makes it a little simpler for you. All right, I like this position because it very simply leads to a lot of different, it's almost like, remember, uh, if you guys have been in my class, I talk about uh, windshield wipering when tunneling. All right, when I'm in this position, I feel like it's very easy to start getting overhooks, underhooks, controls, entering in, and it's a very similar configuration we're using on entering in of that, of that lay kick. So, uh, long story short, if this is weird to you, but you like it, play with it, okay? If you're just like, what the fuck, I can't, do the fuck, stupid. Cover your head, ah, uh, shit, knee kicks, I'm sorry. Cover your head, He kicks, just enter in, in the same thing, okay? I, I don't wanna spend too much time on this, okay? If you wanna, there's, you, you guys know already, there's a lot more to this, but right now, um, I'm really more important about getting a hold of that leg. Uh, very simple. Once we can hold the leg, we're just doing an inside leg trip. So he throws his jab across, bah, bah, I crash in. Now, you notice every time I crash in, I'm actually trying to get, crash into movement, all right? I don't want to be a dumbass. He throws a jab across, he throws a jab across, boom, boom, stay there, kick, and like, and just hold it. And like, I'm just going to get hit. He's, I'm, he's too static, he's too heavy. That leg's coming down. But every time, like, same thing concept, if I'm going for like a snatch single, I can't just pick someone's leg heavy off the ground. If I start bowling him forward, that leg comes off the ground much easier. So when I'm picking up on the leg in the air, defending against it, boom, 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 I start coming move. again. So he throws that jab cross, bomb, bomb, kick, walking in, hitting a movement, turning. I hit my trip. Right when I hit my trip, I'm making sure I have control of that leg. I can't move the leg now, my hips are in the way, so it's like hips up. Clear, make sure I'm not getting hit with a head kick. Now I'm throwing it by. It's like loading my right hand, and that's where that, that hit comes in. I'll give you a little, another adaptation called Tai Toshi. Uh, same exact thing, all right? On a step, I'm not gonna get all the way around, kind of stay right here, I just stick my leg out, okay? Now it's a simple little, a little easier. It's almost like mixing the two between, okay? I like big throws, they're fun, they look cool. Uh, and they're just, a big throw ends a fight, as far as I'm concerned. You smash them on the ground, we had six inches of padding. If he didn't have six inches of padding, didn't know how to fall, he'd have a bad day. A really bad day, okay? So again, from this position, okay, I'm still gonna add my turn, but I'm not gonna go all the way around. Since it's weird, I get kind of jammed, I'm just gonna stick my leg out, right? Now, if you look, I have my heels up, my toes, and now I flex against his knee as they pull him to me. Back my knee, I'm <laughs> Jim's gonna go through uh, essentially a uh, jab, cross, frame three, boom, and then and then into a clinch. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna reclinch. So we just came off the wall. All right. So now I'm gonna hang on this arm and shoot this hand up through the middle. As I shoot through the middle, I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna meet my hands underneath. Called a pinch headlock. All right. So you guys, who's here with me on? Oh, shit, shit. Adam just did this on. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go for a simpler one first. I'm gonna hop a little bit and get a leg hook, all right? When his leg hook happens, I'm trying to actually sink my thigh on top of Jim's knee. I hop again and pull and extend. Very simple, dirty version of like an Oso to Gary Taitosh. So he enters it again, boom, 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 clinch. Now I'm gonna shoot through, come around, get my pinch headlock, cheat step, leg reap. Hop, extend. Very, very basic. Um, this is what's really cool about this one is it's cutting the tie clinch. What's important, not cool, is this he has a tie clinch. Coming through the middle, and my hands are already in position. I'm just changing my angle and getting that pinch headlock. Getting my reap, almost sitting on it, and come down. So, do uh, you see Jim's knee on this? Okay. I'm like, see how it's bent? So when you guys fall, go with it. Don't try to resist the takedown. So I let, like, let, let, let the leg come off the ground. Don't get glued, because the more pressure this happens, your knee's gonna, get, gonna tear your knee. Um, happened to Big Max, essentially three weeks ago, two weeks ago, because he wouldn't go on, down on takedown that was pushing down on his knee. He just wouldn't accept it, and eventually MCL turns. All right, questions on that? So what you guys do is exactly this. He enters in, one, two, boom, clinches, okay? Hang on it, re-clinch, get your grip, cheat step, and finish. Cool? 
So we're gonna work off Koichi Gary. It's an inside leg. You put your right leg forward. All right. So we're looking for like I'm gonna look for a um, a mirrored stance. It means I have my right leg forward. He has his right leg forward. If I have my left leg forward, he has his left leg forward. I actually, wanna do this. I think we better off me that way. Okay. So uh, what we're gonna do is start with a simple arm drag. Arm drag concept. Just moving it over. Okay. I could simply just be passing it. I could. I find I catch him off the footwork and his hands not involved. But right now we're gonna do off an arm drag. So I'm gonna go. Inside out on a step and capture with his leg. Fall down. He instantly recovers knee shield half guard and frames up. That's our first beat. Alright? One more time again. I'm going left leg lead. We're playing around. I catch that arm, snag it. He recovers half guard right away. Alright? So with this particular technique, the Japanese just we call Koichi Gary. The idea is that I'm isolating his Achilles with my Achilles. And I'm bringing my hips down on his knee in case he falls down, okay? So if I do it nice and slow, my trap comes in, I sit basically on his knee. I should end up with the leg between. He's gonna recover knee shield half guard. Cool? Yeah. Yeah, I go, no. Uh, yes, he does. Right? So I have to be, if his, let's say, I want to take off, attack off my left leg. If his leg, this left leg is bad, he's southpaw, I don't have inside out, I have outside in. So there's like different, different directions of the trip depending on where their, their legs are. So this particular one, I'm lefty, he's lefty, or I'm righty, he's righty, and so I'm going inside out. I'm attacking the center line, coming outside, compared to attacking the outside line and coming in. Make sense? Good question. Anything else? All right, let's go.